It's been a week since Universal Studios released their plans for a theme park and resort based in Kempston, Hardwick, Bedfordshire, and local residents have been invited to share their thoughts on the plans so Universal can use their feedback as part of their feasibility study. The plans show changes to infrastructure, including new roads and train stations, as well as an approximation as to the location of the car park, hotels, city walk, and of course, the theme park. During the first phase of the resort, which is expected to open sometime around 2030 or 2031, Universal will utilise the southern parcel of land, which is around half the overall 476 acres they own. Meanwhile, the northern parcel will be for storage and construction, and then developed at some point in the future, possibly for further hotels and entertainment, and even a second gate. So, at the moment, all effort and excitement will be directed at the southern parcel of land, specifically this rather lovely looking red section reserved for the theme park. Since Universal published the document in early April 2024, and since I released my video shortly after, I've noticed a lot of people comment about how small they think the land looks. And I have to admit, if you purely look at this document, the land reserved for the theme park does look a little underwhelming. But, if you pay a visit to the site, and I suggest you do before it's closed off for good, you can get a great sense of just how huge this land is. And of course, at this moment in time, you might not have the drive, inclination or energy to visit the site for yourself. It is just an old farm covered in flags at the moment after all. Not exactly what we hope to see in six years time. So, in this video, we're going to try and get across just how big this site is, and why you don't need to worry about the size of the proposed theme park purely from the plans. And I'll tease you with this image. That is a standard football pitch right in the centre of the theme park. That might just give you some idea that this theme park certainly won't be small. But before we get to the theme park, let's take a look at the car park, which takes up a lot of room at the southern end and is closest to the village of Stewartby. The PDF published by Universal states that there will be enough spaces for around 4,200 cars, which is pretty big, but we can't get a sense of just how big that is until we overlay Alton Towers car park on this space. And that includes the parking for Splash Landings Hotel and the car park over by Galactica. That shows the scale of just how much parking there is likely to be alone. In fact, it's so big, it's not too far off the size of Magic Kingdom's car park, which is so big, you could probably get lost in there for days and maybe even never be seen again. And don't forget that car park is so big that you actually need to get a land train and a boat or monorail before you get anywhere near the gates to the park themselves. Or how about this image, which shows just one of the multi-storey car parks from Universal Orlando Resort, and how it fits into the space. I know Universal has said that there won't be a multi-storey car park in Bedford, at least for now, but there's every chance one might be constructed at some point in the future. And this is how much space they have to play with. Moving on to CityWalk, the area marked in yellow, and admittedly, yeah, it looks fairly small as well. but. If we take City Walk in Orlando and overlay it on top, you can see that there is only a little bit of overlap, and there certainly wouldn't be any overlap if it wasn't for the lake. There is a hell of a lot of room for plenty of shopping, dining and entertainment options, as well as a hotel which I would expect to be located over the entrance like at Universal Studios Beijing. And finally, let's take a look at the theme park, and we can use Google to map out the approximate size and shape of the land. And from this, we can work out that it's going to be around 110 acres or so in size. And it's 3 kilometres all the way around the perimeter. And which of the park just so happens to be 110 acres? Well, None other than Islands of Adventure, which, remember, has a ruddy great lake in the middle that takes up a lot of valuable space and presumably won't be at this park. Or if it is, at least not at this scale. If we overlay Islands of Adventure onto the map, we can see that yes, there is a little overlap, but that's because the land isn't the same shape. There is some red poking out to the north and south that needs to be taken into account. Similarly, Universal Studios also more or less fits onto this bit of land, 
Again, there is some overlap, but you can see that overall it could quite easily fit. And this map even includes that huge plot of land behind Men in Black and Simpsons. Then there's Epic Universe, which we know from construction photos and plans is absolutely huge, with expansion plots in between each of the four worlds we currently know about. And when Epic Universe is laid over the Universal Studios Great Britain plot, it's a similar story. So there is no doubt that this park will be big. To give you some context with the theme park much closer to home, here's what Thorpe Park would look like if you were to pick it up and plonk it in Kempston Hardwick. You could probably fit two, maybe even two and a half Thorpe Parks into the theme park space for Universal Studios Great Britain. Or how about the Millennium Dome? Sorry, the O2 Arena. If you've ever been to the O2, you will know just how monstrously massive it is. And here, you can comfortably fit five O2 Arenas nicely into the theme park site. And here is what Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey's show building would look like on the site. And if you've ever been to a Universal theme park, you will know just how massive that show building is. And here is what 35 Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journeys would look like on the site. Actually, we could probably fit another one on there, couldn't we? There we go, 36. But last year, last year I had 37! <laughs> references. So, there you go, you could quite easily fit a theme park the size of Islands of Adventure into the plot of land currently marked as theme park space in the plans for Universal Studios Great Britain. That means plenty of space for world-class dark rides, theming, coasters, restaurants, hotels and more. And it's also worth highlighting that the theme park probably won't open with as many attractions as there are at Islands of Adventure. Just look at how Universal Beijing opened a few years ago and that's probably a sense of the scale we will get with plenty of expansion plots, a lot like Epic Universe. What do you think? Are you disappointed by the size of the land in Universal's plans or are you excited to see what they can do with the space? It's also worth remembering that these plans are far from final and could change if and when formal application is made. They might even make changes based on feedback following the public consultations that are taking place in April. The more we discuss this project and the more information that comes out, the more exciting it becomes. I would love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments if you think the land is small, if you're happy with the plans, and what you think they might do with the space. It would also be great if you could subscribe to the channel, that way you'll see whenever we upload new content. We'll be headed to the public consultations and we'll of course let you know what we thought in a new video very soon right here on the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.